this is Elliot Haspel, and welcome to the second edition of Best Practices Weekly. So today we're going to be talking about estimation in math, and this is drawn from an article in Teaching Children Mathematics, which is a product of the National Council for Teachers of Mathematics, specifically focusing on elementary instruction in math. And in this article, a group of researchers talk about a new way to help kids learn their estimation skills. Estimation can be a very challenging skill for kids, especially younger children. Uh, I know both just in thoughts of estimation, we ask them to estimate your age. I often had my fourth graders tell me that they thought I was somewhere between 20 and about 75, um, and everything in between. And also in math, just find that students have a lot of trouble figuring out if answers are reasonable. And so when you're asking them to multiply things like 40 times, you know, 5, and they end up with answers like 15,000, and can't realize that couldn't possibly be the answer, or in the other way around, if they're trying to multiply 40 times 300, and they land with the answer somewhere on 120, and they just can't figure out that doesn't possibly, possibly be right, but, but they're completely bewildered by why it would be that this couldn't possibly be the answer. And so, these researchers have talked about a new way for teaching estimation, and the key is side-by-side -side strategy comparison of hypothetical students, and it's a very metacognitive way of helping students think through what does it mean to estimate, what are the different ways to estimate, when might we want to use a different type of a strategy, what type of strategies have benefits and have disadvantages in given situations. It's very much a conceptual understanding of, of the very very essence of estimating. And so, for an example, what I've drawn up here is an example of what this would look like. And you would give students materials with two people's approaches to the same estimation problem literally side by side on the page, just like what I've shown here. This is important because having one on one page and then another option on the next page doesn't actually get at what the researchers are talking about. And you have these hypothetical students, in this case I've chosen Barack and Michelle, um, if they, they talk, you have them essentially give a little bit of an explanation of what they've done. And so, in this estimation problem, 39 times 28, um, what Barack did was he says here, I rounded the top number, then multiplied it by the first digit of the second number, and he comes up with 800. Uh, Michelle, meanwhile, says that she rounded both numbers, and then she multiplied them, and she came up with 1,200. And the fact that these are two different estimation strategies, that they came up with quite different answers, is could be a very rich source of discussion with students about what estimating means, the benefits, the disadvantages, um, and all of that. The researchers talk about a couple of key implementation strategies to make sure that this actually gets across to students what we want to convey. First, you have to be very deliberate about the problems you're actually choosing. Um, these have to be problems that actually would have multiple strategies that could be applied to them, and they should come up with answers that would show that different strategies yield different types of answers. And what I mean is, if this problem was 39 times 21, instead of 39 times 28, actually both uh, Barack and Michelle would have come up with the same answer using their strategies, which could be an interesting lesson in and of itself, but if we're trying to contrast strategies, we have to make sure that the problems actually lend themselves to A, using different strategies, and B, that the different strategies yield different answers. Uh, secondly, the researchers talk about how it's very important that when you're giving these problems to students, they're prompted with a series of questions to ask, the, to, to ask themselves, what is this student doing? What is the benefits to the student's approach? What may be the disadvantages to the student's approach? Uh, which approach do you think is better? In the written instructional materials we're giving students, they should be explicitly um, prompted to think about these things. And also, there should be time built in for class discussion. So it's both an individual reflection about these different estimation strategies, and also as a class, making sure that kids have time to voice their opinions, defend their opinions, really wrestle with the idea of their different ways to estimate, and why would I want to do it a certain way in a certain situation. The other important thing that the researchers pull out 
is we have to make sure that students do have the background knowledge such that they actually can complete the, the, the estimation problems. So if you're working with students who struggle with the very idea of multiplication, who might be able to say this is 40 times 30 if I round both numbers but I don't know what to do with that, or if students don't really understand rounding, that actually that has to be built in first before you implement a strategy like this, or else it's just they're not going to have the foundational skills to be able to gain uh, a real good sense of how to use estimation. Uh, so that's this, this really interesting idea, and I'm fascinated to hear what people think about it, and thanks for watching.